Let me call the hearing to order. Uh, let me thank Ranking Member Graham, uh, our colleagues on this committee, and our witnesses uh, for being with us this morning. Uh, in my view, we are living through a pivotal moment, not only in the history of our country, not only in the history of the global community, but in the history of humanity. When we talk about our responsibilities as human beings, as parents and as grandparents, there is nothing more important than leaving this country and the entire planet healthy and habitable for our kids, grandkids, and future generations. This is a moral responsibility that we cannot shirk. So today, let us be clear, the debate is over. The scientific community has spoken in a virtually unanimous voice. Climate change is real. It is caused by human activity and is already causing devastating damage to our country and throughout the world. The scientists have told us that we, as a global community, have less than a decade, fewer than 10 years, to act boldly to transform our energy system away from fossil fuels and into energy efficiency and sustainable energies, or our entire planet will face irreparable harm. If we do not get our act together, we will see more devastating and extreme heat. We will see more floods, more rising sea levels, more extreme weather disturbances, more ocean acidification, more drought, more famine, more disease, and more human suffering. Now, I have heard from some of my colleagues and some very powerful special interests that the cost of combating climate change is expensive. And that's true. They're right. But my response is, compared to what? So let's be clear. The cost of inaction of not combating climate change will be far, far more expensive in every way than transforming our energy system away from fossil fuel. The economists have estimated that the cost of not acting on climate change will total some $34 trillion in the United States alone <clears throat> in lost economic activity and more than $100 trillion throughout the world by the end of the century. And if you're not worried about the financial costs, the scientists have told us that the cost of climate inaction may put the entire planet and life as we know it in serious jeopardy. In fact, if we do nothing, the effects of climate change will lead to the deaths of one and a half million people across the, across the globe every single year from factors such as malnutrition, heat stress, and tropical diseases such as malaria. If we do nothing, the effects of air pollution in the United States will lead to the deaths of almost 300,000 Americans between now and the year 2030. If we do nothing, the effects of climate change will throw over 100 million people throughout the world into extreme poverty. If we do nothing, the World Bank has told us that the effects of climate change could result in the mass migration and displacement of more than 140 million people in Latin America, South Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, and other locations by the year 2050. And when millions of people migrate, no one doubts that international tensions rise and the likelihood of armed conflict increases. While some of my colleagues may still refer to climate change as a hoax, let us be clear. This so-called hoax threatens to destroy our food and water supply, flood our cities and towns, and displace millions of people from their homes. Let's talk for a moment about rising sea levels. What the scientists have told us is that unless we reverse costs, 
major portions of New York City, London, and Hong Kong are at risk of chronic flooding by the end of the century, while cities like Miami, New Orleans, and Atlantic City could be inundated by severe flooding much sooner. Let's talk about extreme heat. Last year was tied for the warmest year on record, and all of the 10 warmest years in recorded history have occurred since 2005. The Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, has found that extreme heat events, quote, are the most prominent cause of weather-related human mortality in the U.S., responsible for more deaths annually than hurricanes, lightning, tornadoes, floods, and earthquakes combined, end of quote. Let's talk about extreme weather disturbances. Last year, we had the most active Atlantic hurricane season on record. Further, over the past five years, major national, natural disasters caused more than $615 billion in damage and nearly 4,000 deaths. Let's talk about wildfires. Last year was one of the worst U.S. wildfire seasons in recorded history and the three worst U.S. wildfire seasons in terms of acres burned have occurred over the last six years. Scientists tell us that these fires are getting bigger and more severe because of climate change. In my view, we have a fundamental choice to make. We can listen to the fossil fuel industry and climate deniers and not worry about the impact of climate change. Or we can listen to the scientists who tell us that we have got to act boldly and aggressively to prevent a climate catastrophe. In my view, we have spent far too long and wasted too much time discussing whether or not climate change is real. This debate was not driven by science, but by a decades-long campaign of lies, distortion, and deceit funded by the fossil fuel industry. Oil companies knew by the late 1970s that the emissions from their products were causing irreparable harm to the planet. Back in the 1970s, they knew that. And yet, instead of working to solve or even acknowledge the problem, they followed the campaign plan designed by Big Tobacco to make sure our government remained inactive in terms of combating this global crisis. In the end, sadly, history is likely to judge the actions of the CEOs of fossil fuel companies as causing more death and more human misery than the tobacco industry. And that is quite a legacy. And let us also understand something extremely important, not widely known. And that is despite all of the discussions about climate change that we have, unbelievably, we are continuing today down the same path. Over the next 10 years, fossil fuel activity in the United States is on track to account for 60 percent of the global growth in oil and gas production. In 2019, the United States was the world's second largest emitter of greenhouse gases. Our emissions per capita were 77 percent higher than China, which was the largest emitter, and 85 percent higher than the European Union. That is not sustainable. In my view, we've got to make it clear to the fossil fuel industry that their short-term profits are not more important than the future of our planet. At this hearing, we will explore the cost climate change has had and will have on our planet. Among many other actions that must be taken, we cannot continue to hand out corporate welfare to the fossil fuel industry. And that is why today I, along with Senators Merkley, Markey, Booker, Van Hollen, and Warren, introduced the End Polluter Welfare Act, which would abolish $150 billion in tax loopholes <coughs> subsidies and special interest giveaways to the oil, gas, and coal industry over the next decade. The devastating impacts of climate change are here, and now is the time for Congress to take action. Uh, as it happens, I invited the CEOs of Exxon, BP, and Chevron to testify today and tell their side of the story. All three declined. 
but I am pleased that we have an excellent panel of witnesses who will discuss the cost of climate change and what taxpayers can do about it. 